Hey, how are you? My name is Emilio. Thank you so much for joining me on this video today. Uh, really, really cool video that we're going to show you. We're going to be looking at the differences between a desktop PC and a rack server. Um, you've probably got a desktop PC. You've had a desktop PC. You probably know maybe what a server is. Um, we're not talking about specifically what a server is, is, is in this video. Um, if you do want to learn what a server is, do check out one of these videos. I've got heaps of videos around servers. We're talking about physical servers and virtual servers and different sorts of servers, what sort of servers you can build. Here's another one that would really be helpful for you if you wanna get a bit more of an understanding around servers. This video is focusing on the hardware itself of a desktop computer and a server computer, specifically a rack server. Before we do get into that, I really appreciate it if you do subscribe to my channel and click on that bell. Uh, it helps me and it also helps you to keep up to date with all of my video releases. All right, let's do a little side-by-side -side comparison here. We're gonna get ourselves a desktop. We're gonna stick it on top of a server. We're gonna grab our camera and we're gonna show you what the differences are from a hardware perspective. As I said at the start of the video, this is not a discussion around what a server is. They've got heaps of other videos around that. We're looking at the hardware. So we're specifically looking at a rack server. There are different types of servers. You've got blade servers, you've got rack servers, you've got tower servers. The point of a rack server is that it goes into a rack it goes into rails and then slots inside of some sort of a server room, a comms room, a data center, whatever that may be. While desktops, generally, they're gonna be out on the floor. They're gonna be out with your users, your people in finance, your people in marketing, your people in sales, they're gonna be using desktop computers. You could have a desktop computer at home, generally won't have a desktop computer in a server room, in a data center and you generally won't have a server sitting on somebody's desk in your office. So let's look at these two. So here we got the two systems, the one at the top being our desktop. This is a Dell Optiplex 7050, and the server down the bottom is a rack server, a Dell EMC R640. So if you wanna learn more about servers, specifically Windows Server or even IT in general, tech stuff in general, you can also check out my description down the bottom where I've got full length, six hour worth of training courses available. Um, check those out because you'll learn heaps and heaps within those courses that'll give you a good foundation for all of this. You can see straight away that they look fairly different. Um, the actual desktop looks like a standard desktop that you'd have at home or in a building in an office. And then the server is something that you would find inside of a server room. It's a long, server, it's a wide server, and is also considerably heavier than what you'd find a desktop to be, quite a bit heavier. Most equipment in a server room goes by what's called a rack unit to understand the height or the actual thickness of an actual device. So a switch, a network device, a server goes by a rack unit or an RU. This server is a 1RU, which is the thickness, that is the smallest RU size. And of course you can buy a server that is a 2RU, which essentially is double the thickness of this. Most rack servers or blade servers uh, have got a cover. As you can see right here, you can take this cover off, uh, which of course contains the brand being Dell EMC, but other brands will have the same sort of thing. And then you're actually now exposed to the front of the actual server itself. Uh, you can see there available slots for uh, additional devices that you may want to stick inside the server itself. So let's look at the desktop first. So at the very front, you've obviously got a number of ports. We've got three USB, older USB ports, including a faster one, and then the USB-C connection. And as well as that, we've got a port for our headphones, or you can run your speakers, and then a DVD drive at the very top. On the right, you've got your power to switch the desktop on. On the server, on the top right, a USB port, we can run USB devices into it. And then on the bottom right, you've got a configuration port. You've also got a power button to switch it on and off. Uh, we've actually got a little tag there as well, where it says Dell EMC R640. Well, you can actually pull that out 
and it has in further information about the server, including the serial number. Now it's important to know the health and the status of your server. So on the left, you've got some status lights there to let you know whether the server itself is healthy. Now commonly a server isn't hooked up to a screen, but you do have a VGA port on the front when you need to install and troubleshoot. And then you'll see that there is a slot available there for a CD or DVD drive, but we don't have one installed on here because we don't need it on every single sort of server. On the very top, you've got just another USB point in there where you can run another USB device. Now the server does have capacity to actually have some hard drives installed and some servers will, you'll actually see the hard drive right at the very front. You'll see two and a half inch slots, for example, of hard drives. But in my case, I don't have these because I'm actually going to be booting my server against what's called a storage area network or a SAN. This is running a VMware environment, which is a virtualization technology. So I don't actually need hard drives within my server. So another noticeable difference is the processor, the desktop having a slower processor being a Core i7, which you'll find in laptops and desktops, while the server has a Xeon processor made by Intel as well, and they're gonna be a much faster processor. This particular server actually has two of them in there as well. On the side of the unit, you'll see that there are some little grooves here, essentially little notches, which is where you actually install the rails for this server. Of course, this server needs to be racked into a uh, cabinet, into a server room. So you're gonna install rails on the left and onto the right, and they're gonna click into these spots right here. And then the server just sits into there and then slides right into place. Here is the top of the unit. You can clearly see the difference in the size, being a rack unit, being a lot wider, a lot longer uh, than the actual desktop itself. Here's the back of the actual devices just to sort of show you uh, the different sorts of ports that are available. Now, of course, very similar to on a desktop, you can have expandable ports. You can actually add additional devices into that. You can also do the same thing with a server. So it depends on the actual server itself, but you're generally gonna have a lot more ethernet ports. You've got slots for what's called SFP modules. You could have fiber channel. You can have all of these other sorts of connections, uh, which are a lot more superior to a desktop. Now, of course, in some cases, you can actually install some of these superior cards into desktops but they're generally commonly going to be found more in the server environment. Closer look at our desktop. Now, straight away, you'll see that there are a lot more ports available to actually install screens. So we've got a couple of display ports as well as HDMI, and we've got VGA, we've got a comms port, we've got all whole bunch of uh, USBs, ethernets, and everything else like that, because that's what you're gonna use a desktop for. On a server, however, you only really have another VGA port, which is the same as what you saw on the front. Now it's on the back, but you're not gonna be running other devices, so you're not gonna have other screens. We've also got an ethernet port on the very far left. That's called an iDRAC port for management of the server. Essentially, you can manage the server remotely. Got a comms port, and then right there, you can see four uh, gigabit or 10 gigabit ethernet ports. A further two ethernet points there, these are 10 gigabit. And then next to those are two slots where you can actually insert other sorts of peripherals, other cables, as well as what's called SFP modules that allow you to have further ethernet or even fiber channel connectivity. So it is quite common to find servers with a lot of ethernet points, and that's because we want redundancy and it's gonna be running virtualization technology and multiple VMs. So you wanna be able to have VMs split across different ethernet points. On a server, we wanna do redundancy where possible. We wanna make sure a server is highly available. So we've got dual powers in here. And of course, we wanna run these powers into different uh, PDUs, different power boards, so that you have redundancy. So you can commonly open up a desktop quite easily. And then inside, you may be already familiar with this. We've got a hard drive right there. This is a two and a half inch hard drive connected over SATA. That's sitting on top of an enclosure, which is housing our DVD drive. The other main components in here, of course, you've got your power supply, you've got your CPU, one single CPU that is listed uh, that you can see right there with a big heat sink uh, on the top of it. Removing that hard drive, you can actually see access to the RAM. This particular computer has access for four slots of DDR RAM. Uh, and that's as much as I can install into it. Uh, there's also ports there for our SATA connections where you can run in hard drives 
and DVD drive CD, etc. But you're only limited to the quantity that is available unless you have expansion cards. And of course, a desktop, you can add additional cards into it, such as graphics cards and even additional slots for other sorts of devices if you so need to. Now, not every server has this, but this one does. It gives you a little bit of an overview of what, what the LEDs do, uh, the configuration, the layout of the internal, the server and the service tag. Here is a little latch that you lift up. You may need to open it with a key. And that's essentially the actual top panel that you use to then lift up. And then we get access to the actual server and can see what is happening inside of it. But here it is, look at all that. There's so much more available within this particular server. And remember I said this is a 1RU server. So if you get yourself a server that is bigger, a 2RU or a 4RU, you can even put more things into there. But you can see the two big heat sinks right there. That's the big metal heat sinks. They are the two CPUs on each side, as well as all of the RAM slots that you can see right there, which are covered by these black um, covers. Here is a typical RAM stick. Uh, very much similar to what you'll find on a uh, desktop, but this is more RAM that is certified and designed for a server. And you insert the RAM the same way that you do on a desktop. The main difference, of course, is that we have a lot more slots. Higher end servers, you can actually store more. So you can install a lot of RAM into this server and then be able to allocate it to potentially a whole bunch of virtual machines that are in here. Here again, we see our big heat sink that contains a really powerful CPU. And of course, we've got two of them in this particular server. So all of this grunt, all of this horsepower needs to be kept cool. So we've got eight fans in here that are constantly on keeping the actual unit cool. Uh, you will find that a server is considerably louder than a desktop as well. And that's because it has a lot more fans because there's a lot more processing, a lot more RAM in here. So the fans need to be running really, really fast to be able to keep the whole thing running at a perfect temperature. Very similar to a desktop, you've got slots available to expand and add additional cards. Now you can see that right here, my four port gigabit card um, has actually been added in later on. And then I've got plenty of other slots are available right there where I can actually expand. And then there's the two power supplies for redundancy and for failover. So even if one fails, the server does not go out. So here we got the server ready to go. You'll see that the rail is now in there. The actual server has slotted onto the top of the actual rail. And now we can just literally push it and then to slide it into place and then click it into place within our actual server cabinet into our rack. So that was a little bit of an overview. Hopefully you've now seen the differences uh, and sort of understand a little bit around what a server looks like and actually see how much more complex and detailed a server is over a desktop and sort of why they're a lot more expensive. I mean, a desktop is, you know, you can maybe pick up a desktop for a few hundred dollars, maybe a couple thousand if you're getting like a really good uh, gaming sort of a desktop, desktop computer, while a server, you're not gonna get one for a few hundred bucks unless they're really, really old and they're really crappy. You're gonna get yourself something that is gonna cost you a lot more into the thousands, into the tens of thousands, potentially even into the hundreds of thousands if you really wanna pimp it up and get yourself a server with a stack of RAM, a stack of a lot of good stuff. Thank you so much for liking and uh, commenting. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And do also subscribe, clicking on that subscription button and on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. Thank you so much for spending the time. Really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.